Well, and a happy 2017 to everybody. Um, yeah, I thought I'd show you around the plot. It don't always look nice and neat and tidy. <laughs> Actually, it don't ever look nice and neat and tidy. But let's show you around anyway. You can see um, this is would be my normal pretty bit. Um, I've prepared that ready for sweet peas. Um, I've cut down the croissants and uh, the petunias I grow in there, the frost has knocked them right back. I'm advised that if I can protect them now, they come back to life, so I might give them a go. I might just give it a go. Then I've got a few bits and pieces here. Oh, I've, re I've, put, I've put some bulbs in, in these tubs and trays. Let me lift, lift the up frame. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. I've prepared. I've prepared that. Look. Just dug it and right to the end. I'm going to put the old grow bags in there, and I'm going to go again. In fact, I might leave that open tonight. Let the frost get in there. Um, I might go again with uh, melons in there. Um, and the hanging baskets. They all need attention. Look at the mess here. That needs tidying up, doesn't it? Yep. Well, but there you go, we've been hibernating for the last fortnight through Christmas. Um, now, in my sheddy bit, in, oh, there's there's my charcoal still burning from bonfire night, look, boiling the kettle. Um, peppers in here, the cold last night, knocked them on the head, but there's one there nearly right, I'll have to take the name in a minute. And I'm trying a little experiment, let's go around here and have a look what I've got in here. A little experiment with red peppers bringing them through the winter and if we look at this here hold on let's just turn that radio down shall we that's better um i've got some parsley in a pot there in a couple of pots and they're doing okay look so i'm going to hope that i can bring them on through um well they, they, they survive anyway but i've got a nice pepper there and it's still surviving it picks the sun up in this corner look and as this is all plastic it's um it keeps quite warm in here um oh let's swizzle back round again cause i'm gonna i've got some winter lettuce i've got coming on uh i've got a uh, geranium there look as you can see i'm bringing through and i started saving up the tubes from the toilet roll tubes ready for me um parsnips because i'll try and get some early parsnips right let's go a bit quick then round to the green ace Green ace. Let's go in the green ace. Oh, <laughs> oh well, it definitely looks sad. Oh, I've got some pepper surviving there though, look. That really was a good frost last night. Hmm. Both sides. <laughs> now that's what I call a good frost. Then we got, um, oh, I've got some carrots that I'm overwintering, look, in this bucket. And then once again, it's just peppers. I think I will pick all these peppers now. We've got some more frost coming this week, so uh, nothing. Oh, look at that, I've got a bonus. There's a strawberry, look, <laughs> just the one. Um, I've trade up some strawberries. Um, Really, I've just done them just to preserve them so that if anybody wants some strawberries, I've got some plants. But, um, or I might sell them for, for a scout expeditions or something. I've got a couple of tomatoes still surviving there. So that one might even ripen off, look. Oh, and then we've got one pepper. There's a pepper, look. And it's surviving. But what I've done is I've clipped off the, the foliage off of some of the peppers and I'm going to see if they will survive through the winter. But we'll see about that. Right, let's have a look around the plot then. Back outside, um, there's me couple of cold frames. I haven't really been using them as cold frames because I never put the lids on. Um, but I've got a few beetroot there. They survived the frosts anyway. Um, and I had some late um, spinach that I sowed with a few spring onions. And the onions are doing all right. Um, I, but I should probably clear that all off now, um, ready to use. Right, um, now then, big stuff. The strawberry bed that I had here, 
you might remember or look back through some of last last year's videos um, it's got old so I'm now gonna I've changed everything I'm using the stones and I've created a new strawberry bed um, I'm going to plant it up totally with new plants. I, I know it's not the best thing. The two-year-old plants are, produce better strawberries. Um, but, um, you yeah, know, you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? So, so, and I wanted to redo it all because last year was a nightmare with wood lice. And I'm going to do my best to do something which will keep the wood lice out. Uh, I don't know if this guttering on the top might work. The... They crawl up to it and they will get underneath it but we'll, they won't be able to get through it anyway we'll see I'm, I'm, I'm working on that one now I'm making raised beds um, taking um, taking some advice from a couple of other websites Ian Ian Nocton is, is uh, got raised beds and it looks good and it looks neat so that's what I'm going for now raised beds I'm cheating now this is the next morning as you can see I've started making up this uh, this raised bed with the paving slabs. What I like about the paving slabs is they're going to last for ages. They're not going to go rotten. And of course, there you can see the polythene, the two v one on top of the boarding, and the polythene forming the ledge in the hope that it will stop creatures crawling up the outside of the boarding and into my plot. Who knows, it may work. Right, back to where we was. Okay. Now the grapevines. Last year, you may remember, I had a lot of trouble with grapevines. I had, um, uh, they got um, a decay of some sort. Um, I think it was called Petritus. But anyway, um, somebody that I know that's got a vineyard in Portugal, he reckons to brush all the bark off, paint the vine, after you've pruned it, paint it with lime. It changes the pH and there's a chance that I might be able to cure it. I try and do everything organically if I can, so I don't want to spray. And then the other thing is, is I've taken lots out, and so I've just got one at that end and one at this end in this row, and then the other row, I will do something similar, so I've ended up with less grapevines, but more space between. As you can see there, um, I'm gonna take one of those out then there's one in the middle and then one at the far end. And I'm also trying eat grafting as well. Then we bed, oh, the strawberries in the tub, that tub there, you can just about see it in amongst all the asparagus foliage, uh, they were successful. My trouble is, is wood lice gonna get in there? They would have got in there now because I've left it in such a mess they can get in there. But what I might tip it out and restart it or I might have a look and inspect it and if there's no wood lice in it, that I'll let them carry on because they will now be the I think they'll be the third year old in there now asparagus I've started clearing it as you can see and I'm saving the foliage there's the foliage I'm saving that that's going to be going between my strawberries to save me buying straw I'm a tight old bugger like that then I've got that dustbin there that's full up with the compost that came from that compost heap um, it's absolutely brilliant stuff. It's all really nice and loamy. Let's give you a quick squidge in there. There, look at that. That's the stuff in it, hey. That's got all the all the plumptuousness that you need. Then these strawberries that were grown in this paving, um, I will probably, depending on how things go, I will probably you now take them up and the paving and I'm going to go back to having grass paths or or if I can grip paths so we come along now to the next raisy beddy I've got new grapevine there and oh, I've got one just we just passed one there um, and then my uh, garlics that's the Isle of Wight garlic there's small Isle of Wight garlics there and then those are the jumbo Isle of Wight garlics and they're looking good and then there's my dessert grape. I've still got to really give that a good old prune. Um, but that was successful. That didn't get the petroitus, that didn't. So that's still to be... I've still got to do that one and prune it and thin it out really lots. Then I've, I've gone again, once again, raised bed look with the stones. 
even though this next one along here is raised bed but it's only 6 b one for a bit of polythene round um, that is my um, shallots and they're looking good then I've got some overwintering onions and then at the far end there are the broad beans and look they're, they're looking good this morning they were limp with the frost but now look they've all come back so I'm well pleased with those the first lot I put in uh, a mouse at the beans they had already shooted and yet he ate the bean but not the little plant and of course the little plant died then it just was, they were laid on the soil but for some reason I, I put that wire around and that did the trick so I'm good now peas oh, I'm so well pleased with the peas look at this despite all the frost and everything else but of course it's nice and sunny now look at that lot they've all survived now normally the slugs eat them off but they haven't done and at the far end because because they're three different sowings the far end ones they are um I've, I've had to put sticks in them because they've already got the tendrils on them and then of course these were the raised beds last year when i was sort of trying to eat they're too small they they need to be big enough but anyway they've still got successfully i've got beetroot there to pick I've still got leeks so um, it's doing good and the bean sticks of course they really do need to come down now but <laughs> and I've got some lovely spinach I'm, I'm a spinach olic um, that's that's doing good and then the sprouts they've been really successful Christmas day perfect sprout for Christmas day the interspersing that I did by putting leeks in between the plants it don't work really the the leeks struggled um, some of them, some are okay, but because there was a lot of foliage on the greens, it cloaked the leeks, so they didn't do so well. So the leeks in the raised beds were perfect. So my advice is, if you're going to grow leeks, grow them in their own bed, all on their own, <laughs> and then you can, can control them. As you can see, they're, they're not sort of moderately successful. There's a few there. Look, that that um, and I should be pulling a couple of those today, and then the then the cauliflowers. They suppose they're heading in April, but they, they, they've grown absolutely unbelievable. Look at the size of that thing. It's a triffid. Um, I can only assume it's because I'm now getting lots of horse poo and the compost is super successful. Then this is where all the pumpkins were last year. That's all been dug now in preparation for potatoes next year. Or no, this year, this year, 2017. Um, and my bed that I had the carrots and um, parsnips in, really successful that was. I got some lovely carrots in that because that's all mixed soil, uh, soil and grit. Um, so I should go again this year, try it again. Um, I should put some compost in there and mix it in, but it'd be, be the well rotted stuff and it won't be a great deal. I don't want the carrots forking. Um, then my fruit trees, they, I've pruned them. Um, and I'm going to try to um, train them like cordon, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, right, and then my last two grapevines, they need pruning now. They were successful. I've got, I've got a gallon and a half of red. Um, they were quite successful. Pond is frozen. I'm having a bit of a sort out here, up here, with some... Um, paving slabs and bits and pieces cars there's an outside chance I might be um, oh that, no I'm going to keep that secret that's for next year and then I've got a few croissants up the end here and all my bins here that add potatoes in now they're covered and there's still potatoes in them they need tipping out and I need to put some seaweed in them ready for next year so there we are now there's a sample of what we've got today uh, it's winter and we ain't done bad, have we? We've still got probably the last of the peppers. There's a few left in the green age, but that's going to be it, I think. Uh, so we've got a yellow pepper and a red pepper and some green pepper, a bit of garlic, beetroot, um, Swiss chard, spring onion. Well, it's not really a spring onion, but it's, an, it's a couple of onions. Um, oh, we've got a big onion, a uh, red one. Um, I've got, still got some white ones that are drying in the shed, of course. Potatoes, both coloured sprouts, you know, blue sprouts and green sprouts, and a couple of tomatoes. That's the latest I've ever picked, a ripe tomato. A couple of leeks, some Swiss chard. Yeah, 
spinnies or did I say that already but anyway there we go that's a good start for the new year isn't it hmm I'm happy with that so there's the plot it ain't as bad as I thought really it's just that there's loads of work still to do um, to, for, for, to, to just to get ready for the spring um, but there we go it's not doing too bad so all I can do is wish you all a very happy growing 2017 bye